Hello, my name is Marcus and welcome to Tabletop Review <clears throat> or Tabletop Reviews because it's a book, there's a lot of them. Well, today, actually, that title is true because today I'm actually having a look at four different things. So basically, um, I'm running out of time. I'm recording this like two hours before uploading if I upload it at that time. So I don't really have the time to do a vast expansive video. So I thought I would just talk about something that really interests me personally because of the way I am as a person and that is board game upgrades. So yeah, today I'm having a look, as I said, four uh, upgrade components for games. Um, basically things to luxurize a game <clears throat> beyond what it already is. And I'm going to go in order from my least favorite to my most favorite. Uh, but that doesn't mean that my least favorite I don't like. I actually like all of these upgrades, there's a reason I have them. And I'm ordering more home. But let's start off um, well, with the the bottom two of these four. Um, and actually I, I, I don't really know which one I like the most. So deciding this one, I'm going to go with uh, whichever I own the least of. Problem is, I own an equal amount of these. So yeah, um, but I have not ordered the same amount. I have one that uh, has a way bigger order. So I'm going to start off with the one which I don't have a smaller order of, coins. And for that I'm bringing out Viticulture. Currently this is the only game that I have coins for. I have looked for more coins um, <clears throat> for multiple other games and that's probably one thing that's speaking against coins. I was looking for it for uh, Crimson Company. They just have basic uh, one and three value coins that I wanted to have, you know, metal coins for. Uh, did I specify that I was mean, talking about metal coins? I don't think I did. But I am. <clears throat> but I couldn't find any. They were very specific, the coins I could find. There's Viticulture coins, the Scythe coins, um, all these ones. I couldn't find any basic 1 and 3 value coins, and that annoyed me. And that still annoys me. I haven't, I'm not finished looking. I'm going to continue looking, so don't like anyone come in the comments like, Oh, this is the fountain right here, 10 minute search. Yeah, yeah, I'm not done looking. I'm going to find some. But, oh, what a clearly black. Coins. Let me show you a nice big five value coins here from Viticulture. There's a two here in bronze, silver, of course. If we can see that properly, I, I, I don't know how close I can get to the camera. Oh. It sounds exactly if I lost a real coin. And of course, the one value ones here. Look at that. That's such a great sound. I imagine if I had a bunch of actual real life money coins, that's the sound they would make. Well, how great is that? Of course, these ones are quite cheaper to produce than real life coins. Um, I mean, I have quite a lot of value here. Um, if it, you know, if you take off the two, uh, the one and the five markings, I have probably more value than what I spent on it right here. Um, <clears throat> Lira, of course, is the, is the value. Ah, there it is. I went on the floor. Currency of the culture. Um, but yeah, I, I really like coins. Let's talk about why I like coins. First of all, that sound and the feel, it really gets you involved in something like such as viticulture. Which is all about wine making and you know dealing and stuff. You can imagine that if you were to like okay get a building built or you know hire a worker or something, it is a transaction of okay welcome to here you go and moving on and, and, and just having the actual coins being capable of transferring them or you know, putting them on the table and going okay I mean here's what you needed. Another one went to the floor. That is just absolutely great. It adds so much when you're playing the game. I love it. Um, and, you know, to me, they, they don't have to need, have a specific look. Um, like that's, you know, these ones have a very specific look to the culture. 
But as I said, for Crimson Company, I also could imagine playing Crimson Company, having the coins, because basically you're hiring mercenaries, right? And that would be like, you know, okay, you get to that uh, tower and defend it, you should coins, you know? Really immersing you into a game that has very little theme, but almost just doubling the amount of theme that's in the game. Simply, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, that's a problem. Simply with this, well, not just one, but a little handful of these, adding so much to the game. That's great, and I love it. And I have recently uh, bought some more coins. In terms of a Kickstarter, I'm backing La Granja, and I got the coins for that one. Again, you're a farmer in Spain and stuff. I can imagine sitting there, you have to pay for something. The coins in your hand, being capable of passing it off to a player that's a bank, or you know, just putting them on the table and be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go do this, and I'm gonna grab the card and build whatever on my farm. It's going to add immensely to the game, um, and it's just great. To have the cling, to have the, to have the weight. It's not because they like, it's a workout. It's not a workout, but just a little bit of weight and a little bit of cling, and you know, I'm, I, I seriously have to stop throwing this around on the floor all over. But that's abs that's amazing, and as I said, I haven't ordered as many, but I, have, I I apparently don't use a lot of games. Like just looking over here at my games collection is over here. Crimson Company, and that's about it. That use coin. Ah, well, actually, that's not true. Dinosaur World. I have metal coins for Dinosaur World as well. I totally forgot about that actually, but I do. Um, I almost feel that that doesn't add to the, uh, the to the theme and to the experience of playing the game. Having the metal coins, it's just nice. Not like this one or La Francia, as I imagine. Um, it doesn't add to the theme so quite as much, um, <clears throat> but I totally forgot that I had them. Uh, you might hear, that, like the first thing when I think coins, I think of my viticulture, I think of that I'm getting like Ranja, not uh, that's a world. That's the effect that I have on viticulture, and that's why I really love coins. Of course, as I said, the negative can't really get them. They're very specific, like you know, it's the lira for viticulture. It's Scythe coins are some that I've really stumbled upon. Um, the dinosaur world ones are very, very specific because they're not just round. So, the specificity of the look of the coins is kind of taking away and making me like, mm, that's annoying because I can't just get it for any game. You almost need it to be special for that game. So, that takes a little bit away from it. But, coins overall, I really like them. I have a knack for giving ratings. I suppose. The coins, um, 6 out of 10. Don't want them to be a mediocre 5, but a, it asks, uh, no, it's gonna be a 7. Yes, it's gonna be a 7. Not quite greatness, but really good. So, yeah, I'm just gonna clean up before I get a hold of the next thing. So, let me introduce the next thing real quick. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is something which I got for a game uh, through Kickstarter, as always, just because I was getting the big box, everything pledge, and that was with it. I thought that was nice. I was excited to see. I was new to the hobby, and I was told this is something that all of the big gamers, they want these. So, obviously, I wanted one, so two. When I first got them, I think the hassle of putting them in the game uh, on the cards <laughs> uh, was too much and the reward wasn't good enough. Um, I looked a little bit around and what I found I wasn't happy with for the games these ones uh, could go to. Um, <clears throat> so therefore, at first, I wasn't very happy with it. But they've grown on me. And what it is, is cut sleeves, as you can see, 
Every single one here is sleeved. Yeah, uh, very much a hassle. Just try and get out all the cards that are sleeved. I know there's some in here that aren't, but let me get out all of my sleeved cards. I mean, the fact that all my cards are sleeved makes me wonder where are my unsleeved cards because I know there's some that aren't. Anyways, you you have the pile that is sleeved. There you go. That's a lot of cards that are sleeved. <laughs> I have big hands. I can't hold these, like even half the piles. So they're pretty massive. But let me try and real quick put these in and, and show you a sleeve. But as I said, it was a lot of work sleeving all of the cards in this game and all the cards in future games. Um, and at first, I didn't really actually. Let me just real quick show you as well. Here's a pile of extra large cards, also sleeved. Just even more cards that are sleeved. Um, of course, you simply uh, bring out of here and you have the card sleeve right here. But yeah, it was a, a hassle and uh, I, I kind of didn't like it because. It was very massive, it was difficult to stack and uh, difficult to shuffle because you couldn't barely hold them in your hand. There's a lot of cards already and sleeving them makes them bigger. You know, it's a thing that you know can hold sleeved cards or can't hold sleeved cards. It's a question that you need to answer when creating a game. Um, and of course the Haston and all this just make me like, not really like sleeved. I didn't want to take them off, I thought that was too much work. So we've got to leave them on, um, <clears throat> but they've grown on me. One thing is uh, they protect my cards, which I like. As I've got more into the board gaming hobby, I think I'm caring a lot more about my cards and someone, you know, using their nails to, and then they can, you know, this is something that might happen uh, when they're laying on the table or something. With a sleeve, first of all, uh, getting a hold of it, you can like bend it almost here without bending the card. I don't know if you can see that, um, and get it up easier, e easier, and and uh, it protects the cards. So I'm falling a little bit in love with them, but it it is with a thing to bear in mind, and this is gonna go completely against what I said about the coins. Ah, they don't make a sound right now, um, <clears throat> and it is the fact, that as you see right here, it's the back around the card, the back around the card sleeve. They are the same, well, almost. Can you see it properly? I hope you can see it properly. Um, <clears throat> that's very important to me because I don't want to put this card into a sleeve and then the background be hidden. You know, so you can't see it. And that's something I found with some cards. Uh, recently I got Doom. Pause for a second, I'm going to turn on some lights. That's better, now you can see properly. Uh, I thought there was enough light, but clearly the, the light completely disappeared from my camera. I can see it. Uh, <clears throat> where was I? Right. Recently I got the Kickstarter Doomlings, where I thought about getting the, 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 uh, the car sleeves. I have, you know, it's around the time when I'm getting into it again. But I decided not to, because the background, uh, at least from the pictures, I don't know, actually know because I don't have them, but made it seem like they would change the background take away from the game and I don't want that. Now that of course goes against what I said about the coins because I just wanted generic coins to be a part of the game. But that's because visually the coins I mean they just need to say it's one or two or three or four or whatever. So visually they don't really matter. It's the feel, it's the sound and it adds to it. But with these ones they don't add to the gameplay. They just protect your cards, their protectiveness. Um, so therefore, they need to not take away from the gameplay, uh, and that's what I thought would happen with Doomlings. I don't know. I don't actually own them, um, <clears throat> um, and that's why also I probably won't get sleeves for uh, Unstable Unicorns, a game from Unstable Games, because the sleeves you get there aren't the same as the background of the cards. And as I said, I, I hate that. I really do. Uh, but this one, yeah. 
it is the same background as the cards, which unstable games are really good at doing that. Making the background the exact same, and then of course a clear foreground so you can see the card. And well, as I said throughout the times, I've been appreciating what card sleep do, and uh, the, the putting the time into it doesn't seem like that much of a hassle anymore. So I do. Uh, so I have ordered some more sleeves, mostly for unstable games. And if I appreciate it more, uh, but it has to be, you know, it, it can't take away from anything. So maybe some completely clear ones, I would maybe own that in the future, I don't know. Right now, not. But maybe in the future, because that wouldn't take away from the gameplay. Uh, so, if I were to get this on a rating, I'm also just going to give it a 7. Uh, it's it's good. I just really like what Kathleen do. Especially now that I'm older and realize it's protectiveness and not... Um, and that's some showboating that I dislike. It's just protecting them. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I appreciate them a lot more now. Seven out of ten. Uh, if you want a conclusion, as I said, I've ordered some coins and I've sorted some more uh, card sleeves. I've only ordered the coins for La Granja because right now they're the only ones I can get to fit. I'm going to get some for Crimson Company. I guarantee it. I need some for Crimson Company. I want it. Um, uh, and of course, this actually means that I have to go down because Dinosaur World means that there are two games I currently have sleeves for. I mean, coins for ones, I only have sleeves for one. So that's a problem. Uh, I lied to, I'm sorry. Uh, but I have ordered way more. As I said, I've ordered some for uh, the Unstable Games series. I've ordered for three games from them. Yeah, three games, I think. Uh, and then I've also ordered for. Evolution New World to get some special card sleeves and I'm thinking about getting the ones for Root because again they seem to be the background of the cards so might as well get those and I do believe that the Everdell Complete Collection comes with card sleeves as well although I'm not quite sure but there are way more card sleeves that I'm getting than coins so that's still true now the next thing because I would say if I had the choice between sleeves and coins I wouldn't know which one to choose, but if this one was the third option, this third option was there, I could only pick one. I know I'm picking this one, 100% guaranteed. I'm getting two games up for this one. <clears throat> getting a hold of uh, Wingspan here and bringing back over to me Viticulture. Can I? I don't know if I can put it down so you can see the table. Let's try and do that. That's way below. That's just the position I should have started in. But here we are, wingspan viticulture, and let me just remove this one, although it's not in charge. What do I have? These car two cards. No, that card. What does these two games have in common besides being Stonemaier games? Well, for both of them, I have an upgrade that I love. It's something that sticks right with me. I'm the kind of guy who likes to organize my stuff and I don't like to have too many boxes lying around. And this upgraded component is exactly what I needed for that. It helps me organize, it removes the unnecessary boxes, and it's all around great. I'm of course talking about inserts. You just see just a component of the insert for the wingspan, the one that holds all the cards here. Can't really, maybe I can tip it a little bit down here and show you. <laughs> I fucking asked for that, didn't I? Yeah, no, I have still cards all over now. Fuck. So that's what happens if you don't glue them. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Ah. Anyways, I also have this one right here. I'm not going to freaking touch that one. Oh my god. They don't usually fall apart like this, I have to say. But that's the one that contains all the coins, as you could hear. And it just completely fell apart. Uh, yeah, oh no, this is not bringing uh, inserts into a particularly good light, is it? Um, no. Okay. 
So yeah, no, I'm kind of frustrating. Uh, do do do. I'm about to talk about how much you love inserts, and they're breaking apart in front of me. Oh, I've got so much clean up to do now. Oh man. Let me half do it whilst I tell you about inserts. Uh, so yeah, what are inserts? Uh, inserts are game organizers. These ones come from uh, Fold Space. I really like their designs. And uh, you really need to glue them. That's that's the thing I will leave you with. I need to get these ones glued. I have a lot of inserts and a lot of components for inserts that need to be glued ASAP. Now some of them are better than others. This particular one from Viticulture is actually very much prone uh, to falling apart. The one that holds the coins. It's That's the one that's not very good. But this one from Wingspan that holds all the cards actually isn't prone to fall apart. It's, uh, it's pretty sturdy. It's it just tells you how much I messed up that I made it fall apart. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, why do I love inserts? As I said, they help me organize my game, and they help me uh, help me get rid of some unwanted boxes. I don't like to have all of the boxes lying around. I mean, right now I don't have all the expansions for Wingspan, unfortunately, but they can all be in the box. Now with the insert, I, I probably would have gotten them into the box anyways, but it's nice if the insert makes the job so much easier for me. The same Viticulture, I do have all the current expansions for it, they're all in the box. I don't have uh, Viticulture World yet, definitely one of my uh, most wanted right now. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, they helped me organize, get rid of some boxes. Everything is in here and it's very neat and it's it's all right where you need it. I mean, you can see how this easy this is for me. Just in and out. And you, then you have all your cards ready. It's very awesome. Um, when they don't fall out of it, of course. But that was an accident and that's not prone to happen. <sighs> so annoying that it happens when it's on camera. Uh, but that's really why I love them. As I said, you need to glue them, and that's probably one of the few negatives I can say about uh, inserts, is that you need to glue them. Because uh, I hate... I hate... Uh, I hate fiddling glue. That's not really my cup of tea, personally. Um, both because I'm really bad at it, and just because it's no fun. <sighs> but yeah, no. Inserts are great because of the organization and, and uh, getting rid of the boxes and all of that. And I'm just gonna say 8 out of 10. They're better than all the other ones, but because you have to glue them, I'm gonna give them that 2 points down from being a perfect 10 out of 10. Now, I'll get this mess cleaned up for before I continue, and then I'll talk about my favorite gaming accessory currently. I don't know if it will ever be overthrown because I love these accessories. But hang on for one moment. I'll get this cleaned up for you. Okay, so that's dealt with. A little annoyance there. I'm gonna try to make this uh, last part slow enough because my camera is actually running out of battery, so I need to finish up. I need to, anyways. I think this video is getting pretty long. The final one. I talked it quite up, up quite a bit. I wonder if well, you know what you're expecting. Playmats. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite. Currently, my favorite gaming accessory. These are just some of the playmats I own. I talked about how I got the all-in pledge for Here to Slay. That included a whole bunch of playmats. I'm backing Casting Shadows with way too much money right now. Playmats, I'm getting those. Playmats for the Lost In series. That fell on the floor. Playmats for Doomlings. Yeah, I got the playmats. Not the sleeves, just the whole bunch here. And then just unstable games, playmats. I have all of them, and I love all of them. I wish they would release a few more designs so you could be more players at once. But whatever, whatever. So why do I love playmats? Well, first of all, they do. What? coins do, they add to uh, the atmosphere of the game. I mean, 
As they were unicorns, maybe are just really nice to look at. They don't really add anything to a game such as unstable unicorns. Uh, but then you have the Doomlings one. You're supposed to be in this weird universe. And look at this. That's just one of them. Lovely sunset. You have the icy place. And there's a freaking universe underneath. And, you know, out in space underneath. And <clears throat> let me just real quick get the freaking central player mat. Boom. That's not the central board player mat. Um, what the hell is that one? Okay, I mean, it talks about how much I love them. I can't find the central player play mat. Well, that's annoying. I will find it. It, it doesn't, that's not important. And the uh, lost in ones here. Lost in your eyes again here. Maybe Lost in Stray is actually my favorite one because it, you know, you look like you're really in a desert here. Like in the, the game, adding to the theme of the game. That's one of the reasons I really love play mats. Then they also do what card sleeves do. They protect your cards, because it's way easier to pick up a card from the playmat than it is from the table. Um, <clears throat> it's a lot easier, uh, and, and way less uh, probability of actually damaging. Here it is, the central player mat. There is a little bit smaller, but yeah, you know, see that? I love this space outlet, it's beautiful. And it really does add to the atmosphere of the game. And the theme of the game. Um, <clears throat> and it protects your cards just like the, the what the hell, um, the sleeves. And you can see on this one, organization. It tells you the, the age here, the first era, the first, second era, the third era, traits, discard. When you look at the uh, individual player play mats, you will immediately also see organization right here you have your dominant traits down here your counter right here your uh, entire area for cards here you really feel the organization and that's the same with the once they have unicorns you know just put your unicorns in this amongst the a lot of slots right there the lost in trilogy is all about having central three decks of cards Central, th central three organization. It helps you with that. I mean, that ticks off all the boxes that I talked about. The three other on the three other ones about how much I love those. They each had like one thing that did. This one is all three in one. Are there any downsides? I'm struggling personally to see a downside to them. Organization. I mean, not organization. That's what. Um, storage. That's the word for it. Maybe if it's a little tricky, like what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking like this, folding them up, putting them next to my game collection. Not really an overly great way of storing something. Um, the Unstable Unicorns one, and uh, what I've been told through the Kickstarter, the Casting Shadows one as well, gives you your own box to keep the playmats in, to make it easier to store them. Boy, that's pretty nice. Now something as small as this one, it doesn't really matter, but this, these are pretty large, these ones. So it matters a little bit there. But, um, multiple easy solutions to trouble storing them, like Doomlings one even came with its own uh, little bag you could buy. I think if I purchase that on the side, I might end up buying that one. And all of a sudden I only have these ones to store somewhere. And it's not because they're difficult to store and they aren't ruined by doing this. Like you can roll them up. Yes. That's a terrible roll, but like rolling up like this does not damage them. And there, a little sausage roll. Do that with all the things. Put them in a little box when you need them. Pull them out. Maybe even fold them the other way around so you can actually see what which ones you are pulling out. Like there you go. Rub a band on the sucker and throw them in a box. So. A little annoying, but an easy solution. These are great. I love playmats. As I said, the organization, the freaking greatness. I'm giving ratings here. 10 out of 10. 100%. The greatest thing for storing your games. Not for storing your games, no. To add to your game. Add to the table. Add to the theme. 
it's, it's so amazing. It's just greatness. I really love playmats, and I'm getting playmats every single time. If there's a playmat, I'm getting it. Like, there's no question about whether I'm getting the playmat or not. I'm getting it. I'm getting it to whatever game it is. Like, these ones came out after the games, and like, I'm getting them. Of course I'm getting them. So yeah, that's my little video on four accessories for gaming and what I think of them. I like all of these ones. I really think that if you have the money to it and you want to upgrade it, these are four great ones to upgrade and protect your games. Really worth the time and effort and the money. Um, but these are to luxify or deluxify, I don't know, your game. They aren't necessary for the game itself. This is something if you have excess amounts of money, which I don't, but apparently I, I still buy these ones. But these are really if you want to luxify your uh, gaming experience. Experience. But thank you for watching this episode. Um, I hope you will join me next time when I am probably going to talk about a game once again. But for now, thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the, in the next one.